very much indeed, Roger. Uh, well, a very good afternoon to you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dr. David Bull. Uh, goodbye. Was it that bad? Um, <laughs> oh, no, no. Uh, no, no, it's all right. It's all right. Um, ten lines. Um, so, uh, my name is Dr. David Bull. I'm a medical doctor by training and I'm a television presenter. I'm a former member of the European Parliament and for my sins, I'm also um, deputy head boy of Reform UK, as I like to say to Richard. So, I'm deputy leader of the party. Let me tell you, for all of those politicians out there, that as a television presenter, as a doctor, most people like me most of the time. As a politician, no one likes me any of the time. <laughs> And, and the funny thing is, when you look up, when, uh, basically, when I ask people what they think of politicians, this is what people say. They're clueless, selfish, manipulators, liars, incompetent, and corrupt. <laughs> <I d> <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not sure that's really where I wanted that to go. But um, the point I was going to make was that I don't see myself as a politician either. So I only got involved because of Brexit. We had already had the referendum, people voted, as you remember, it was 50 to 48, and it was a really obvious um, response that the public gave. And yet the government and the opposition did everything they could not to carry through the vote of that referendum. And I thought that was totally unacceptable. And that's why I got involved, um, and it was really because I was so angry more than anything else. And I then got a, a call from, from Nigel, asking me if I would then stand and blow me down. We became the largest party in the European Parliament, and we changed changed history. And although it's not perfect, we did secure Brexit. And without us, it would not have happened. And that shows that real people getting involved can make a real difference. And I want to pick up on something that Tom said, actually. I, I've thought for a long time that politics is broken. If you look at the Conservative Party, they're all the same types. They all go to Oxbridge. They all have done PPE. They then become a councillor. They then become a member of parliament. It's wrong. I think we need real people with real jobs who have a real understanding of what people are going through. And so that's where Reform UK is very different. And Rich and I are very passionate that we want people, all sorts of people, whether um, Jack, for example, in Erdington, as a postman. That's fantastic. You know, a, a postman knows everything about that local area. We need teachers, we need doctors, we need lawyers, we need cleaners, we need everyone and anyone who is passionate about their communities. I also want to pick up on something else someone said, which is um, the current, uh, Roger I think it was, the current system is broken. Because the first past the post system means that we really do swing between the Conservatives and back to Labour and back. And actually, if you look at the European elections, it was done on proportional representation, on something called the de Hont principle. And that's how we became the largest party there. And actually, the, the thing about having PR is it brings coalitions, it brings stability, it actually brings some sort of accountability. And you can see that with this government. They, there is no accountability. In COVID, they kept pushing through rules which made no sense. They were, they were basically dictated to by a bunch of idiotic scientists called SAGE. And quite frankly, every prediction they did, they got it wrong. And yet the government then implemented everything that SAGE did. And I'm very angry about that. It destroyed businesses, it destroyed people's homes, it destroyed people's lives. And I think many people died who should never have died because of false information and bad science. And that should never happen again again. So, um, so that's the system. Now, we're not going to change that overnight, but I do want to pick up on, uh, I think, what Mark was saying and indeed Roger. Let's just have a look. It seems like we've done a lot of elections recently. So in Chesham and Amersham, we came fifth and that goes back to your point about being one of the five big parties. Old Bexley and Sid Cup third. And of course we beat the Lib Dems and we beat the Greens. In Shropshire with Kirsty we came fifth. In uh, um, Erdington uh, we came fourth and again beat the Lib Dems and Greens. There's a pattern emerging here. So we built, beat the Lib, D Lib Dems and Greens and we are at least in the top five. So the political landscape is shifting and it's shifting dramatically. I was trying to think also about why these are important, these local elections. And you really only have to look at Ukraine, a country that was a democratic country, to show how important democracy is. And look at what Putin is doing. He's basically overruling democracy every single day. And that's why we need to fight at local level, at parliamentary level, and so on. Because without our democracy, we have nothing. 
I want to also just mention a bit about where we are nationally because um, I'm involved in sort of writing some of the policies. Now, the, the way that I'm now describing this is that, in fact, Savage Javid came up with his, my planned care. Do you remember that for the NHS? Well, it's not his planned care. It's Reform UK's planned care because I wrote that. And so, essentially, the Conservative Party is extremely good at nicking our policies. And I kind of feel Reform UK is now the incubator for the Conservative Party. When we come up with a good, po uh, good policy, they steal it. So, essentially, where I am in the health policy, we have 6 million people waiting for elective procedures right now. I think that's going to go up to as high as 12 million. People are suffering, they're in pain, and no one's doing anything about it. And back, I think, 18 months ago, we said we need to liberate the private sector to help move this, uh, these waiting lists down. So the money should follow the patient, the, uh, the care should remain free at the point of need. And, get, and blow me down, the Conservatives have now copied that. So we're now revising that that. We're now in policy groups, and I had my first one the other night, and actually there are some really good ideas coming through. And it's really interesting with the NHS, because people say, oh, it's, it's wonderful. Well, what is true is the NHS is probably the most loved medical system in the world. But is it the best? No. It really isn't. Some, some of it is very, very good. We get really good outcomes in some fields. But in other fields, it's terrible. We have fewer MRI scanners than Slovakia. Why is that? Why are we not running scanners at night? Why are we not getting people through the system much, much faster? And there's a lot of bureaucracy. If I was to tell you that 48% of the budget, staffing budget, is not clinicians, what company would run like that? That is insane. 43 managers earn £270,000. They earn more than the Prime Minister. That also cannot be right. So we're seeing this emergence of massive middle management, and every time you bring in a target, you need a manager to work out whether you've hit that target. Let's get rid of targets and talk about outcomes. It's a much better way to measure it. I also want to say something about um, energy policy. You will have seen that we've launched pa um, Vote Power, Not Poverty. Um, and again, you know, this is, this is something Richard and I have talked about for a very long time. In April, when the p price cap is raised, our energy bills are going to double. People are already hurting. In October, we think it will go up by another 30%. And what are we doing about it? Nothing. Because Theresa May, back in 2019, if you remember, was desperate to leave a legacy. And so she said, oh, we'll, be, uh, we'll make sure that we're, we're climate neutral, carbon neutral by 2050. Well, it's unachievable, it's unaffordable, it's not possible. And of course, David Cameron then doubled down on it. So we're left in this terrible mess. So Richard and I wrote, and that's what this whole campaign is about, we are sitting on two trillion pounds worth of energy in the form of gas under our feet in the United Kingdom. We have no coherent energy policy. At night, solar doesn't work. In, uh, when it's not windy, the wind turbine, uh, turbines don't work. When it's too windy, they don't work. So the point I'm trying to make is, yes, we need to move to renewables, but we need to do it at a pace that we can actually cope with. So in the interim, we do want more solar. We want wind. We want hydroelectric. We want nuclear power, SMRs. No one has had the guts to build nuclear reactors. And whilst I'm at that, in Sizewell, they're trying to build another nuclear reactor, which is going to be owned by the French and the Chinese. Whose idea is that? That is not energy security. This has to stop. It absolutely has to stop now. And we need energy security because, as you can see, we're living in very turbulent times uh, indeed. And one other policy, which is, is a favourite of mine. Do you know there are 769 members of the upper house, of the House of Lords? There are more than in the House of Commons. And most of them are asleep. And I would also like to know how... how um, I don't know if you know this, they're, they're split into Lords Temporal and Lords Spiritual. The Lords Temporal are 92 of them, or 92 hereditary peers, and then the appointed members. That's basically if you've been a good boy or girl, you get thrown up there. And the Lords Spiritual, and there are 26 vicars who are sitting in the House of Lords. This is not a fit revising chamber, and again, it has to go. We need to slim it down. We need to make sure it's efficacious. We need people who are actually awake when the legislation is going through. So just in terms of where Reform UK is, 
We, on, I think the great thing about the name is it, it does what it says on the tin. We're going to keep the stuff that we think is really good and reform the stuff that's really bad. And when that starts with health, with education, it starts with uh, the, the uh, Houses of Parliament, it also uh, starts with energy. And I think, you know, as you say, Roger, <laughs> we've only been around a couple of years, we've seen massive traction. To go from nothing to being the fifth player, or fourth or fifth player, in national uh, opinion polls is extraordinary. And what will happen is, the minute we get one person elected, it becomes easier and easier. And as Kirsty rightly said, we spent a very long month in Sedgefield together. It was a very difficult campaign, but people are beginning to know who we are. If you ask any company, it takes two years, for example, if um, Waitrose was to rebrand, it takes two years before anyone knows who you are. Well, we're now two years. People are beginning to know who we are. So we need to increase our presence, and that is everything. People on the streets here locally, it means at parliamentary level. It also means Richard on radio and television, me on television and radio as well. And all of that means that we're now starting to set the agenda. And I think the vote power, not poverty, could become a very defining moment in the same way that Brexit was. So thank you very much indeed. Thank you.